The U.S. Department of State named Baruch College for being one of the nation's colleges and universities with the highest number of students selected for the Fulbright U.S. student program. Could it be an effect of the vertical campus? I stayed at the Freehand Hotel. It's housed in the former George Washington Hotel, home to many storied writers, musicians, and creatives, including Christopher Isherwood, Keith Haring, and W.H. Auden, who even dedicated a poem to the place. He wrote of it, That water comes out of the taps. The sheets are not covered with toffee, and I think he may safely assume that he won't find a fish in his coffee or a very large snake in his room. And I'd say that about sums it up. A stroll up Broadway brings a bit of unexpected magic. Stepping inside Harry Potter, New York, I am suddenly immersed in a magical world passing under a huge sculpture of Fox the Phoenix. Potter fans will get their minds blown by the wide range of memorabilia and enjoy a tankard of butterbeer with their cohorts in Gryffindor. The bracing weather makes me burn calories at an alarming rate, so I hunt around for warmth and nourishment, and luckily my search is a short one. L'Express is a Lyonnais bouchon, a culinary sanctuary where classic bistro dishes take center stage in a cozy, inviting atmosphere. It couldn't have been more perfect. Old model trains and a full bar give it a nostalgic feel. And my lamb burger with goat cheese hit the spot on a chilly winter evening in New York. A casual saunter up Park Avenue brings us past Sarah Beth's restaurant a great brunch place for a traditional morning fare. Further up, we can catch a glimpse of the famous Empire State Building. Luckily, no giant ape climbing it today. And it's worth a peek to check out the spectacular New York Public Library, founded by Governor Samuel Tilden, who bequeathed the bulk of his fortune to the endeavor. The city that never sleeps apparently finds time to read, and its massive Nearchos Annex, funded by the Greek shipping magnet, holds a circulating collection. The Charles Scribner's Sons building at 597 Fifth Avenue is worth a glance. Designed by Ernest Flagg in a Beaux-Arts style, it was built from 1912 to 1913 for the Scribner's bookstore. Now a retail space, the Fifth Avenue facade contains a glass and iron storefront on its lowest two stories with black and gold decoration. Flagg said of it, I think the building is the best thing I ever did.